Hello and uh, welcome again to the Love Spoon Workshop. Now today's video is the start of a new series. What we're looking to bring you is um, a, a guide to how you can actually make your own love spoon. Now, as you can see, we've made many love spoons over the years, uh, but to get started, uh, it's actually relatively straightforward. You don't need a lot of equipment, you don't need a lot of time, and you don't need a lot of skills, to be honest with you, just to get started off in a simple way. So that's the idea of today's video, is to give you a guide of how you can actually get started. So without further ado, uh, let's get into the sort of things that you're gonna have to think about. And one of the first things you're gonna think about is that we're making the love spoon, we're making it in wood. So the first question we've got to answer, what wood is best for us to start with? Now there are a few different suggestions that we're going to give you, uh, and here they are. So we've got one, two, three uh, samples of wood there. Now that first one, the larger one, uh, that is actually a piece of oak. Now despite its reputation, oak is a nice timber to work in. Uh, we use it regularly. Uh, it's got a nice grain, nice character to it, and it does make nice love spoons. So that's one uh, piece of wood that you could think about using. It's different types of oak. The next one then we go on to is that one there. That's a piece of mahogany. Uh, lovely timber again, nice grain. You get different types of mahogany, quite a wide variety of different ones. So uh, some are good for carving, some not so good. So that's another one that you could consider using. And what we're going to use uh, today then is one of the ones they regard as the actual uh, wood carver's wood, and it is the lime, the flowering lime. Uh, quite a, a well-known one for doing wood carving. So we're going to be working in that one there. But what we always suggest, when you're starting, try different timbers. Some timbers suit some people better than others. Myself, I learned to carve with beech. Not one that you'd usually recommend, but it suited myself. So that's what we would say for anyone starting out, try different woods. So following on from uh, looking at the actual wood that we use, uh, other things then you've got to take into consideration when starting to carve love spoons are the tools that you're going to need. As you can see, we've got a wide selection of hand gouges that we use on a daily basis. We've got various equipment from scroll saws to band saws to belt sanders to um, circular saws for processing the wood. So when starting, you may have questions of what kit do I need and how much kit do I need? Well, look, in reality, um, we would recommend starting off in quite a simple way. We would say that it's, it's best not to buy a lot of equipment and to use quite simple and traditional uh, tools to actually get a feel of the wood and to, to really learn um, to interact with the wood. Because that's, that's basically what you're doing with wood carving. You're, you're working with the timber itself. So the uh, tools that we would suggest it's worth looking at investing in initially is a coping saw. Um, quite a simple piece of kit. You can, as you can see, you can wind the handle up like so. And the reason for that then, we can actually release the blade. So if you're working inside the wood, so when you're cutting out something inside, you can drill a hole. So that's another bit of kit that we recommend. You've got a hand dr a drill, a power drill there. You don't necessarily need a power drill. You can use a wheel brace or something like that. Whatever you've got available. Drill the hole through, feed the blade in, and cut it out. And a lot of your cutting out around the outside, it can all be done using that scroll saw. Other tools then you're gonna need. Um, there we go, there's one. That's the first one, we picked up that one there. That was the first gouge that Dad ever used. So uh, when he carved his first love spoon back in 1969, just behind me there, there you go. That was the first one he carved. Uh, when he did that, he did a lot of the work with this particular gouge. So cutting out the bowl, that sort of thing, would have been done with that gouge there. But basically what you're gonna need is two or three different curved shaped gouges. So you've got two different shapes there and another one there. So two or three different gouges to start off. In terms 
of other equipment then that that is useful then when you when you're starting out. Um, sandpaper on a block. Again, you can pick these things up relatively yeah, relatively cheaply. That one there just an off cut of wood. That one there's over thirty years old. Um, does the job. And then you just put your sandpaper on the block so you can get nice surfaces. So if you're sanding that one there, just rounding it over, you use the sandpaper and block. Uh, you can also use then more sort of fine sandpapers, more for your finishing, more delicate. We also then use a mallet to give it a little bit of extra pressure. You don't need a mallet, okay, that isn't needed. You can use any block of wood the only reason that we ever use a mallet is if you need a little bit of extra pressure. So any sort of block of wood that you can have, uh, that, that'll do the job for you. One thing as well, uh, when you're working with hand tools, they're wooden handles usually. So to put a bit of extra force on it, don't use anything like a hammer because you'll damage the actual tops of them, you'll damage the wood on them. Use something that is, is like a mallet, either a block of wood or a, a mallet itself, something that is wooden, because if it's wood against wood, you'll be fine. But if you hit it with something metal, you're going to damage your tools. main sort of area to look at is the actual designing of your of spoon. So how can you go about doing that? Well again, don't need any sort of expensive equipment or anything like that. Uh, most of our designing is done using things like this. Scissors, pencil, paper, and that one there, that is useful. That's carbon paper. So what you can do, you can design your love spoon out on paper initially and then you can transfer it onto the wood by tracing around it with a piece of carbon paper underneath and transfer it directly onto the wood. So in terms of uh, actually getting your inspiration for your design, you've got things like that one there, a, a sort of cooking, a practical cooking style spoon. When we started, that's how we did it. You, you look at a spoon and you think, okay, you know, I'll follow that sort of shape on the actual wood. So you can put something like that on the wood itself and mark around it. So you can start off with a practical style spoon and you can mark that on there and it gives you nice symmetry, that sort of thing. And afterwards you can, you can adapt the shape and add different symbols. So that's what we're going to look at now. We're going to get down to it and we're going to actually design and make a simple Welsh spoon. <laughs> 